Hey, this is Phil Yano with the Tech After Five podcast. And uh, once again, I'm here with my friends. I've got uh, Carol Hamilton with me. Hello. Hey, Carol. Phil. Nice to see you. Well, thank you for that. And my pal Scott Pfeiffer is here with me as well. Glad to be here, Phil. As always, friend. Oh, and again, look, Scott didn't even wait, Carol. He went right into the, <laughs> oh, I've got a branded mug to show off. Oh, and can I mention? Oh, I'm related to the guy who designed the logo. And yeah, <laughs> what a handsome. Subtle, subtle. Branded, branded <laughs> coffee mug required. You um, too can get a personalized logo and branded coffee mug. Hey, listen, if I ever come out of this self-isolating thing, which I would do with you, but if I come out, I need one of those mugs. I'm just saying, you said there might be a mug with my name on it somewhere. It's waiting so. for you. Yeah, I got to do just that. Just waiting for you. One for you too, Carol. Excellent. Yeah. Excellent. I look forward to getting it soon. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I'm ready. I'm ready to yeah. see some people, even if it's at a little bit of a distance at the beginning. So. And he's making the uh, uh, strategy business consulting polo shirt. Oh, excellent, nice. excellent! You're gonna have a hat and a and then a watch and the whole thing before this is over, right? Keychain. Maybe if you keep being bored on uh, with coronavirus. Yeah. <laughs> so to yeah. Someone saw this shirt the other day. This is Tech After Five shirt that I'm wearing, which I really do like. It's a summer shirt. I have to wear a t-shirt under it when it's cool outside, but it's a super summer weight shirt, and. It is, I've had this many years. I wash it all the time. It works really well. And then someone said, I see you got swag. And I said, here's the problem. I paid 70 bucks for this shirt. And I know you aren't going to pay me 70 bucks for a shirt. <laughs> so I'm going to have to find something a little cheaper next time around. But uh, I like the idea. So let's, um, let's do a quick uh, check-in and see how things are in the world. Scott, you're working with a bunch of, you work with a handful of clients, as you always tell us, in and around mostly, I think, the Carolinas. Talk to us about how Scott is doing, do the check-in, and talk about uh, what your clients are seeing, what's on their minds at this moment in these, wait a second, unprecedented times. <laughs> I want a musical stinger to go with that too. Unprecedented times. It's your podcast. You can put it in there. I, I know. I know. <laughs> Jesse, here. <laughs> put in the stinger. Dum, 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 dum. <laughs> That's it. So, I'm doing great. Continue to be very busy. Um, I am helping people move forward. We've got uh, people that are looking, have me helping them look at uh, benefit plans and stock option plans and other things like that to attract and retain key talent because they're ready to push forward. Um, one of my uh, clients that sent everybody home at the beginning of all this is ready to bring them back. And so we spent this week uh, creating their return to work plan so got a lot of good documents on that from my buddy, Stephen Buckingham, attorney extraordinaire, who is on the Greenville City Return to Work Task Force. Right. So they had a bunch of documents uh, that they had put together with a bunch of different attorneys from different areas and HR professionals. And they had pulled all this advice together and it references the CDC's advice and all this. And they, they put out some really great stuff. And I sort of called that and changed it and sent it to the team at IntelliSoft and they looked at it and we created a plan and um, edited the plan and we have now implemented the plan. I think it's going out today. So they are bringing, we are implementing phase one of return to work on Tuesday. And that will be the office is open and it is a voluntary return to work. You can oh. come back and work in the office if you want but you don't have to yet. Love that. And yeah. if you come back and after a few days, you're just not comfortable, you can go back. What you can't do is willy nilly decide every day whether you feel like yeah. coming to office. That's just chaos. But you can still work from home if you're more comfortable doing that. But what we've heard just from talking to people is that about half of them aren't ready to come back. They're still yep. concerned. And about half of them are really tired of being at home and would really like to come back. So, that's going to be phase one. We're ramping up the amount of cleaning that's being done by the cleaning service. We're putting out social distancing guidelines and uh, providing extra hand sanitizer and soap and stuff and, and all those sorts of things. Um, 
So I know those guys, I mean, you've got the, you've got all the, those, the people who are in the office, but now I think they must have a significant number of travelers. What are they doing about that? They do. So they're actually traveling starting next week. And wow. that's going to be, uh, we are providing uh, hand sanitizer, gloves, masks, those sorts of things for the people that travel. Travel right now is voluntary. There's work to do, but who goes is totally voluntary. Uh, if you don't feel comfortable, we'll find another way. And um, we are, uh, you have to do whatever the place you're going says. So the first place right. I'm going is to New York City. Um, you have to follow New York guidelines when you get there. Are pretty tight. So they got to follow the guidelines of the place they're going and also our guidelines, which is, like one of the guidelines is you take your temperature every <clears throat> morning when you come to work. And if it's over 100 degrees, you stay home. If you don't feel well, you stay home. If you know you've been exposed to someone who has COVID, you stay home. So there's a lot of guidelines on that, like that in there. Uh, still taking his. He's good to go. He can continue but to podcast. Still, I'm green. I'm green. The podcast is good. Yeah. Well, and, and TSA is saying that too, right? TSA is saying you're not even getting through security. Then the airlines aren't letting they're They're checking it as you go in. And I was curious, Scott, do you mind if I ask you a quick question or I didn't want to interrupt your... No, go ahead. Okay. okay. So one of the things that I've been hearing about is uh, that companies are, we just had a client ask us, if we have you start traveling to us, are you willing to take, go take the antibodies test that proves that you've already had it and now you carry antibodies before we expose you to our, our group of people? Are you hearing that in your clients too? I have not heard anybody say that yet. And I was just reading an article that said that there's going to be basically a passport that says I have had this and I am less likely to get this or give this to people. And so that that might be that might just be one of those things that's right out on the horizon for the moment. But I think it might come quick. So it's it another might, you know, heads right up. Now, I think they're not entirely sure what the antibodies do for you. And I right. think the tests are as accurate as they'd like them to be. I just yeah. don't know. But I have. People, I do know people who have started getting the test. I know two people um, who have taken the test in the last week. Both came back negative for antibodies. Um, yeah. yeah. But, uh, you know, I don't yeah. know. Yeah. I don't think the technology is there, but it's, I think it's just people going, where do we start? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, yes, I'd like to get tested and find out that I'm positive for the antibody so I could become a plasma donor. I'd like to be selling my plasma yeah. if I could show positive for antibodies. Right? Everybody <laughs> I know who takes it hopes that they come back positive. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. That's I'd like to think the result. <laughs> yeah. That's the indication I've passed this mountain already. I just didn't know it. It was okay. Right. Right. So, right. Everybody Carol, breathe. What what are you seeing in your world? Yeah, well, I'm, you know, we're having the conversations about the, the distance. We're still a long ways off from putting people on planes just yet. But what we're still talking about is developing this other skill, which is how are we communicating online and how are we making virtual leadership actually be leadership rather than just showing up on a Zoom call, throwing information at the wall and hoping that somebody's listening. And yeah. so we're trying to create a whole productive muscle that is a different muscle. And I think people are taking it much more seriously now because now we don't know when this is going to end. And the global teams that should always have been doing this because that's how they've been communicating are under so much pressure right now to really step up. And so that's where we're focusing and it's going really well. I can't say that it's not an exhausting process to, to develop, but it's, uh, it's, um, it's up and running. So we are too. In fact, we're up at six this morning with a group in Japan. And so um, everybody's trying to have this conversation of how do we get good at it until we're all back and we're not sure we're all going back. So, right. yeah. Yeah. Well, uh, keep us surprised. I'm, you know, I know you, I love the fact that you can kind of bring us in globally, right? Different, you've got different groups in different places and how that might be working for them. So I think that's good stuff. Well, you know, from my side, the thing, I feel like we just came off of a win. All of us were kind of there together. At least you guys were there, hopefully is either consigliere or cheerleader for me. Um, we just did the first Tech After Five digital dive or digital dive by Tech After Five. Let me put it that way. We'll see how this works at the long haul. That name might not stick, but uh, we just did our first digital dive. We had an awesome cat, Tim Waller, 
Miller come in and talk about what Greenville County School District, a very large school district in the United States, not just South Carolina, certainly the largest in South Carolina, but the 44th largest in the U.S., right? Kim came in and talked about that, but we had uh, people on the call. We got a chance for them to kind of meet and mingle. So even if you are still in that self-isolating phase, there's a chance to do some networking. But more importantly, we got to connect you with someone who had some real authority in the space of e-learning for the moment. They just ran a giant experiment. I thought it went pretty well. Yeah, I did too. Uh, the digital dive or the yeah. Greenville County No, I'm sorry. I wasn't really kind of evaluating digital. I mean, Tim is there to talk about that, and you can go find that from us as well. But, I mean, I thought having an event, bringing people in a room, getting them a chance to connect to each other, and, you know, it was neat. You know, we had folks from Little Rock, Arkansas, right? So we got an event there. We had a natural draw from folks from Little Rock that showed up for that. We had educators from Columbia. We had one guy from Missouri. Um, so it, this thing that we talked about in the beginning is we can expand the reach. This is not just enough, not just the people who could drive up and have lunch with us were able to show up. Yeah, and recruiters too. Scott, didn't you say that you recognized an, a, a number of people who showed up as recruiters? I know in my breakout group, there were some people who were looking for recruiters. So I thought that was a really great combo that you brought together, Phil. Both of the people in my breakout group were recruiters. And, you know, between last night's Tech After Five digital and today's uh, digital dive, uh, you know, there were 10, 15 recruiters in the audience. Mm -hmm. So if you're someone and they, you know, I got to talk to them in my breakout group. I talked to recruiters from two different companies in my breakout group and they both said, uh, it depends on the industry. You're seeing different things in different industries, but right. both of them are as busy as they've ever been recruiting and placing people right now. So yeah. if you're somebody who's looking for a job, uh, tech after five is the place to be because the recruiters are there and they are looking for you. Yeah, that's absolutely right. So I, I felt like this was a success. We got to run a couple of different kinds of ways. We're doing breakout rooms and things like that. You know, we wanted it to be a learning event, an inspiring event, and a connecting event kind of all together, right? We're, so we want to have some real impact on the larger community. So hopefully we had impact for people personally, but we had impact for them collectively. And I like doing that. And now let's just, let's go do more. Let's make it bigger. Let's bring more helpful and useful information to the audience. Yeah, I mean, between last night and today, I made at least a dozen new LinkedIn connections. Yeah. And I like that because what you're really talking about is building the network. And building a network isn't about waiting until you need it. Building a network is about having a group of people around you that are resources to draw from, whether you're looking for a job or whether you're looking for hiring some, somebody or whether you're looking to outsource something. I like the idea that you get connected today and build that, that in the best word, is network yeah. of people that you're connected to. It's just a soft place to land if you do need it, and it's a great place to support even if you don't necessarily aren't in some sort of dire straits. Yeah, I read something when I was, I think, in – high school or college uh, that stuck with me called dig your well before you're thirsty. Mm, yep. 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 Yeah, absolutely. Super great advice. Certainly something we're doing, you know, you know, Carol, we, we've talked about this before, right? We're, we're networking for life and there's lots of reasons you might need that network. And there are lots of ways you might be able to help others in your network and having that built ahead of time is just kind of, uh, it's a way to be useful. And if you're looking for more and varied ways to do good in the world and have the world do good for you, having a good network is a great way to do that. Mm -hmm. yeah. So I thought that went really well and I'm glad that we got to do that. Hopefully uh, folks will uh, go out and check that out and look for our upcoming events as well. So we're all of our tech after five events are in June. Again, we'll be, um, the, uh, virtual. We're calling them virtual, right? And um, we just had a great conversation with the Little Rock team as they're talking about how they want to expand it into other places as well. And uh, just this morning, before I got you guys on this call, um, I got an email from someone who was at the event, who's been at the event in multiple cities last night and said to me, this could work anywhere. I think you should have more cities. And I was like, ha, ah, me too. 
So <laughs> I, like you think. <laughs> I like the way you think. I think we can make that work. So we're off going to do Those guys in Little Rock are doing a great job. They really are, aren't they? I mean, it's just really, I mean, I love getting on the calls with them that we're doing now because it's just, uh, it's inspiring to see what they're up to and how they are bringing people together, right? So they're bringing industry and professionals at various steps in their career and they've built this really cool apprenticeship program and they have a fully virtual apprenticeship program even so i think that's i think they're doing great work and it's neat to watch them do what they do so what a, that's a great relationship for us to have i don't think we could have a better partner uh they're just perfect for helping you know their mission and our mission just so closely aligned there's just no friction in that we're all trying to help the same group of people do the same thing so yeah. excellent um, so my thing today is i sense a space in a world this is kind of where i'm headed with what we're doing in today is i think i feel like we're at this real pivot point right and i've been trying this argument out on a or conversation out on a few people and i wanted to have this conversation with you because i think there are folks in our audience you know every time we talk we're seeing change in what people are doing and i think it's time for us to have a, a conversation each of us with ourselves about what skills activities and behaviors do we want to carry with us into the future right so we had the old normal the universe came along in the form of this time a pandemic, right? And it whacked us and said, okay, you cannot do things the way you used to. I mean, we're just not going to allow you to do that at all. And we're in that spot right now, which I've referred to as the kind of weird middle, right? We're in a spot where we feel uncertain of ourselves, uncertain of the future, but it's long enough that we couldn't just like sit and do nothing, right? I did, you know, people were saying I'm given awards for being a couch potato. You know, I really, I spent some time on Netflix and Hulu. I'll get, I'll grok to mm -hmm. that. But I did not spend all of my time doing that. I, it was not all input. I was also doing work. I mean, and when I say work, I was trying to figure out new ways to do things. So I feel like I pulled some skills, but it is also clear to me that as I go into whatever comes next, that might be different because of what I am learning right now. So I put this tool together, which was just kind of a said, all right, we have three distinct time zones in our life, right? We have the old, we have our uh, old normal, the weird middle and the what's next in our lives. And the question is, what are the skills? Let's, let's take a little inventory. And I always think about this as kind of a way of like uh, my kids' backpacks when they go to school. Those things weigh, weigh 80 pounds. I, I mean, I don't know when Scott was in the military, if his backpack weighed as much as those books that the kids have. And it's like, why do you carry all this stuff with you? And that is always my question. Why carry? I mean, if you could put, if I could put a Kindle and a Chromebook and a notebook and a pencil, what else did I need in that, right? But it's not, they, that's not their way of thinking. But I think a lot of us get to a spot in our professional career or as we build our business and we just don't realize all the stuff we stuffed in that backpack that we still slog around all the time. And we don't realize it's tiring us out. It's slowing us down. It's not allowing us to have the energy we might do to do even better at the stuff we're in the middle or what comes next. So it's time to repack our bags, which is why I call this thing repacking during change. What are the things that we take an inventory? What does that like? So I'm wondering if um, you guys will play along with me and kind of think sure. about what that might be. Yeah. So uh, if you think about old normal, for example, and I said, and I, I said, all right, I write down three skills or activities that you have mastery of and practice. Really. So if I can put myself in my head back into my old normal, I would say, well, you know, Phil was really great at convening meetings, right? I mean, if, you know, you might not think I was great at, but I, heck, I had 500 and some under my belt. I'd been doing it for, you know, more than a dozen years. I mean, and it, we had we had success, right? We'd have about 70 or 100 or 125 or sometimes a couple of hundred people in a room when we did it. So that was a thing, convening people in the room. That was a skill that I had mastery of in that time. But that was definitely old normal, right? I don't have to think about that. That, that is not a thing I get to do today. That does not fit into this moment. So I went to that old, that is my old normal. And I, it is one of those things where I had to kind of set those skills down and say, all right, that's where I was. When I think about what I come to the weird middle, I think, ah, I'm in this moment now where I can still convene, but I can't do it 
in the real world. I have to do this virtually. Can I be good at that? Well, you know what? My Zoom skills sucked before this started. I'm just going to tell you. I didn't know how to pull that piece off. So I had to figure out, I, I ran a series of experiments to try to get good at it. And that was my thing. I'm wondering, as you do this for yourself with Carol and Scott, as you're doing this for yourself or as you're working with your clients, what are the things that you have seen as emergent skills, you know, there, they were things that you or your organization were great at in the old normal, but you're kind of redefining in this weird middle. Carol, how, can you, what's that, what's that look like for you? Well, I, you know, I think um, I brought this up a fair number of times and I think it's worthy of continuing to bring up. If, if you are, let's go 40, 45 and up and you haven't up, upskilled your tech skills, you need to do that today. To, this is how you use the time. Turn off Netflix and start turning on tutorials. Find out what, com- what platforms your company is working on and become the master of them. Because the people who know how to do this stuff are the ones who are going to be invited to the meetings and they're going to have the people come to their meetings. I am watching leaders flail about keeping very important people waiting while they try to figure out tech on the fly. And that doesn't work. That was old school. That was old normal. You could get away with, well, I know this. Everybody expect this. Nobody expects it anymore because we no longer have that kind of time available. And we are already looking at Zoom zombies all over the place. They're tired of it. They're, they're already sick of being there. You have to grab them with your messaging, which means you have to understand tech. And I was part of that crowd. I too came into this going, well, I know Zoom's out there and I've seen it a couple times, but I didn't think it was going to be a lifestyle. And since then, every company we've worked with has a different platform. So now we had to become experts at Adobe Connect uh, meetings. There's now there's Google something, Google Meet that we have to go into, Skype and all of these. They all have a core premise that doesn't make them terribly different from one another. So once you start understanding the thought process, it really doesn't take much to go from one to the other. They have different attributes. But I would suggest anybody, and if you're on the job market, absolutely you need to be studying different platforms so that you are really good at whatever it is that they do and find out what it is ahead of time. I think we talked about that with the interview piece, but I think that that's probably one of the biggest things that I'm seeing in the weird middle right now. Yeah. So I'm curious, and I I get that completely, right? All of those pieces, I completely understand, but you get to work with people that on other dimensions of themselves as well, or of their organizations. And I know that you spend a lot of time in both communication and leadership skills. I'm wondering if there's anything that's emerging in this time. I mean, I don't, if I am a leader, I do not get to talk to people the way I did before. I mean, I don't ever get them face to face. I don't get to exert influence or control the way I did before. The handles have moved on. Yeah. So, what are, have you seen anybody kind of develop things, or are they still struggling? Well, here was a really interesting question that came up uh, with one of our clients, where they said, "We're we're doing these town halls, and we're trying to demonstrate what's happening with HR." And every time we try to talk about what the business is, all people want to know about is, do we get to keep working from home and are there going to be layoffs? How do we have the conversation we want to have when this is all they keep asking? And this is one of those things that we think about with leadership change is that you don't get to drive the agenda until you address what they care about. And it seems like the smallest of things, but when you're virtual, you're not getting that same understanding of their emotion because they're not live versus if you had 500 people standing there screaming out, Hey, you know, what about our layoffs? What about this or that? But now you could just mute them and go, well, we're here and we're going to do our thing. And then watch the chat box set on, get set on fire. So this is what I'm talking about when I say coming back and understanding how you're applying these things and how are you communicating? Communication is supposed to be a two way street and that's harder to do in this, this, era of technological conversations. So this is where your leadership needs to come in and say, how am I going to redefine that? How am I going to connect? And part of it is pay attention to the topics they want to talk about first, because they're not listening until their questions are answered. Even if you have to say something like, you know what? I know this is what you want to know. And I'm aware, and I want you to know, we don't have that answer yet. 
but I want you to know we're on top of it. And we're going to update you once a week, every Monday at eight o'clock in the morning. You will have an update whether we know something or not. And if we know something sooner than that, you'll hear it sooner than that. And that's a different kind of communication than managing 400 people live. Right. You still have a similar message, but it is very different. And it's about paying attention and giving a, an avenue for them to communicate with you so that you're not doing all the talking at them. There is a lot of, here's my message, instead of, what do you think? How do you buy in? How are you participating? How am I mining the amazing people I went out and hired? How am I bringing their genius forward? Or am I just putting up a bunch of PowerPoints and going, well, here's what you need to know from me today and forgetting that I really want to hear what they think and what are the avenues for them to be able to reach you with those conversations? Right. Now, I think that's, I mean, that's super important. And I, I was sitting here thinking, I wonder if you have to like draw out that little chart of Maslow's hierarchy of needs and explain to people, you know, your cats are all down here somewhere. You know, they're worried about, are they going to lose their job, yes. which means they lose their house or they can't eat or their kids don't get the yeah. new X, right? And that they're down here and you're up here, you're thinking about this because all of these needs are met for you, right? So right. you're that's why you're at a, operating a different plane, but you got to meet them where they are. I know Scott and I were on a call yesterday and I was concerned about what their concerns were. And I said to them first, I said, I want to make sure first that we address all of your concerns before we get to where I wanted to go. I said, let's do that first. Tell me everything you feel like I need to know or how I can help you move forward. And I felt like that moved the whole conversation forward. It's like, I'm not here to push an agenda. I'm here to ask you, what do you need from me? Right. So I, I think, think that, yeah. I think need- that's leadership 101. Yeah. And it's easy to forget, especially under stress. It's easy. And a leader still does have to hold that vision. That is part of their job. It's just they need to let go of it enough to understand where the people are and be the bridge between those two layers. Sure. Absolutely. Scott, how about you? For your folks, I mean, and you and yours, are, are there things that you're emerging for you in this weird middle? It's kind of the same thing. You know, I've worked from home since before now. Um, a lot of my clients have been virtual since before now, but um, I did always have the opportunity to go in. Like if we were going to have a management committee meeting or we were going to do our annual cybersecurity certification, all that was face to face. And I always felt like I had good skills in a small group to lead the room, whether I was the guy in charge or not. I could sit back and watch, but if things seemed to be going off rails, I felt like I had good skills to go in, sort of take over the conversation, move it the direction I wanted to do, get people back on task. It's just one of the things I've always been good at. And now, like you said, I'm having to do the same things, but in a virtual environment. And can you exert the same kind of charisma and leadership over the interwebs as you can in person and it's a different skill but a lot of it for me is and i think you mentioned this phil becoming familiar with the platform and how it works and how the various different platforms work and where the you know getting comfortable with all that helps you sort of get that layer of distraction out of your mind so that you can go back to your because you don't have those layers of distraction in a face-to-face environment, right? Right. Um, so if you can get familiar enough with all of the tech, then it becomes just background and you're back to your core competencies of leadership and, um, you know, help, helping keep people on task and, and that sort of thing. So I think that's been good. Now, one advantage I've had here in the weird middle is I'm able to go to more meetings that my clients have because – you know, they have a, like in Telesoft, they have a management committee meeting three times a week. They don't want me driving all the way out to Malden for a half hour meeting three times a week. That's unnecessary. But online, I can, I can sit in on every one of them. And, and uh, I know a lot more about what's going on and I'm able to put in a lot more um, input. And so I'm hoping that even as they go back to work, we will keep doing at least some uh, of these meetings online um, so that you know I can participate more. And I think yeah. that would be a good thing. And well, even, 
even the company that has been virtual since before this, uh, Cortel, we've kind of doubled down on being virtual, right? We had one person that always went into an office. We don't have that now, but we figured out ways around it. And because people are isolated in their personal lives now too, we have started doing a weekly uh, just happy hour type call in that's been working really well. And um, I'm doing more check-in personal type stuff, uh, sort of ministering to the bottom levels of that Maslow's hierarchy during my uh, weekly stand-up meetings. And so I think those are some habits that will continue on uh, in the what's next. Yeah. Well, yeah, thanks. You just answered the question I wanted to ask you. It was like, hey, how much of that do you get to carry for you? But I think that's a thing, right? So, but, but you could realize that that might also require, you know, exerting a little influence on the client to say, hey, before we did it this way, we learned this works really well. Let's figure out how to keep that going. I'd like to attend that meeting, but that means someone's got to turn this knob and that's open right. that up so we can have that. That's right. Well, a big so part of I the influence is cash. I mean, realistically, you can also look at what is it costing you to go back because that does speak to it. And I think in my own terms, and I'm sure yours too, Scott, it's like, what is it, what is it costing on a billable hour for you to bring all these humans in and where you're, wherever you're bringing them from versus if you were to do that half hour meeting? Yeah, that's right. Yeah. That's yeah. a huge influencer. Especially if you've got meetings where you're bringing in hourly rate type third parties like attorneys or accountants. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. Or even soft dollar folks where it takes them two hours to get there. We had a client where they were all driving into various offices and the way that they had set it up before, you couldn't use a computer and have an inner office conversation unless you were on site. Well, they've now taken those computers home because they had to. And now they've discovered a whole new level of collaboration, yeah. which they didn't have before. And I would suggest for me, that's one of the new pieces in this weird middle that I'm really enjoying, which is I'm seeing so much more collaboration. It was always an opportunity before, but now it seems so much easier and so much more natural where you say, well, of course, let's bring so-and-so in and, and see if we can work together. And there is something that has shifted around the whole concept of who we bring on to these calls that's different from who we brought on to conference calls. Right. Because the conference yeah. call was cover myself. Go ahead, Phil. Right. No, no. I, and that's exactly right. So the thing is, there was a friction in there, right? And it was unfamiliarity with the tools, unfamiliarity with the process. And quite frankly, we had to do a behavior change. And we all know, because we worked long enough and hard enough with enough people, that behavior change is hard. Right? Yes. It is hard to get people to do something differently than they have in the past. But this is where we kind of get to that point. We're saying, here we are. We're in this weird middle. It took friction out of some parts of our operation. It added it in other places, right? And that's exactly what happened. It was just like a lever on our behaviors. And we snapped this over into doing something right. else. And now it's like, well, guess what? If we didn't pay any attention at all, we would just slide into the old ways of doing things. Scott gets 100% of his workforce back into a place, and they'll just go, well, we did it this way before. Maybe that was it. But the fact is, we can get rid of some of the old junk that we had, some of the old ideas about what was possible and what was not possible, and we can execute them a new way, even in the what next, right? Whatever the what next period is for us, we can actually be and act differently. Go ahead, mm -hmm. Scott. Yeah, I think the what next is going to be a mix of the old and the weird, right? Because yeah. as much as this new technology has allowed different ways to collaborate and different connections to form that I would like to continue into the what's next, I'm still a big believer in the face-to-face you get just so much done when you're with someone. So, and I know a lot of my people are missing that too. So I think there's uh, even Cortel, which is all virtual, we would travel to trade shows every month or so. And the three or four of us that are the top management, we would be together and we would, you, I don't know, it's weird how um, just being together things come up that just don't come up otherwise. I think it's getting better with the, the online to have that same sort of casualness and things just come up. But um, I'm still a big believer in face-to-face. -face. So I think in the future, in the what's next, there's going to be um, some return to the old of what worked well and, and people working together in a, in a space and getting things done. 
with retaining some of the of the you know what we've learned from the online collaboration too. I think, I think, that's, 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 sorry, sorry. I think that's absolutely true, right? That is absolutely right. That that is what it is. And you know, you learned that there was things that we got done when our propinquity was high, right? When we were connecting because we were in the same space, and we want to get that value or the benefits out of that. What we're challenging ourselves, our clients, and our audience to do is to think about this intentionally, right? right. Don't just let it roll from one thing to the other. Go say, like, all right, listen, we got a little a lot of good out of this. So let's take this and take this, and this is what comes. But we're asking you to be, we're, we're saying, let's learn. Let's not get through this time and not say, ah, oh, this was really cool. You know what? I love the fact that we get together in the real world and do these things and that works really well. And these are the great outcomes that come out of that. But we also know that there's sometimes the decisions need to be made. And in the past, we would just not make the decision because we couldn't get people together. Now we realize there's a low friction way to get those folks together in a virtual room if we have to. And we can make an important decision because we can be face-to-face, -face, even if we happen to be in the moment in different cities. As an, and that's just one example I can think of. But I think, I, again, the reason I said, let's go through this exercise for all of us is to think, what are the things? And I think part of it might be how I schedule my week, quite frankly, for me, is one of the things. Well, I learned one thing. If I, I can work out of the house doing this this way, but no, there are things I might like out of an office. I might do that. But I learned that my travel schedule can be completely different than what it was yeah. and maybe accomplish more or maybe accomplish a different goal. And I like that goal even better than the one I had before, right? So. Yeah, I mean, when I think about tech after five, that's a great example. You know, I'm looking forward to going back to face to face tech after fives when everything is safe. I think that there's just some synergy to being face to face that I would love to get back to. At the same time, I would also love it if we kept at least one digital uh, tech after five a month where people from all over can come get together. Uh, because I think there's been some great advantages to that. Uh, I think it's, I think you're absolutely right. I mean, so that's a thing that I've learned and we're going to make that right. So there is going to be in some format, even if, even if the world, like if tomorrow I said, get what vaccine, antibody, contact trace, it's all done and we're super safe and getting back together and that's all right. Well, yes, we will start getting back together in the real world. Cause I think you're exactly right. There's benefits to that. But oh my goodness, why would we ever give up the idea of having an all cities all call every month where everybody can be at tech after five regardless, right? Yeah. Super yeah. exciting. Yeah. yeah, I know with my coaching that I've, you know, I used to do and the way I do coaching when I is go and spend time with that person. And depending on there's a lot of things that how much time but we always had that initial conversation was live. And then it could go virtual. And what it wasn't was this kind of virtual. It was just calls. This kind of virtual to me is absolutely, I mean, this is the ideal kind of conversation if you have to have it. But I still, nothing replaces hanging out with somebody, breaking bread at some point, and having conversation that allows time to just be. And you're not feeling like, oh, there's a hundred distractions. Hang on, I got to grab my kid, or I got to grab my pet, or I've got a, or I, whatever it is that's going on. It's just two human beings in the same space having conversation that get, has a natural rhythm that will find its own place to go, and nothing in my mind will replace that. Yeah. No, I agree entirely. Well, again, we think there is super opportunity to have some breakthrough outcomes for ourselves and for our audience by being intentional about how we go forward. And we think we're going to call that repacking during change. So I'll tell you what, um, I just made a little sheet, something for you to write this stuff down. We're going to stick that so that you can download that and be, you know, listen to the podcast or watch us on YouTube and download the little sheet and do that for yourself as well. And it's called uh, repacking during this change, right? So we'll put that tool out there for everybody. Um, this is what I wanted to accomplish. I'm so glad that I got to do it with you two. Um, so Carol Hamilton, as we we're about to say goodbye, tell people how they find you in the world. I'm easiest found on LinkedIn, Carol Hamilton Live, or you can uh, email me at carol at redfoxroad.com. 
Absolutely. And Scott Pfeiffer, how do people find you? LinkedIn, where I'm Scott Pfeiffer. I'm on Twitter at F Scott P. You can email me at strategybusinessconsulting at gmail.com. So many ways, Phil. I know. There are plenty of ways. I, I'm always ways. Like, call something. You know, I'm, I'm not surprised you didn't tell us about your TikTok handle or whatever that's called. <laughs> when I say that, it's part of the, the group that I'm in of a certain age. Not a lot of TikTok in my life. Um, but uh, so obviously, if you want to find us, here's the ways that you can help us, right? Right now, one of the things we're asking you to do is if you would go out and actually you and maybe even get your friends to subscribe to our YouTube channel because it's a little helpful. We're just looking for, this isn't, we're newish on this side. Uh, I mean, I don't, it's not a begging bowl. If you, if we are helping you, it would be, we'd be honored to have you help us back by just clicking subscribe on that thing. And obviously sign up for the mailing list. There's a podcast is also available on an audio edition. I can't tell which one you're doing right this at this moment, but uh, we'd love to have you uh, subscribe to either one of those that makes sense for you. But if you could help us out by putting a few more names on that YouTube channel, that opens up some things that are features that we would like to do something with in the future. So you will be helping us with our evil plan for world domination. And when I say evil, it's really not that evil, but it is a plan and uh, help us out in meeting everyone we can. Here's a, here's our thing. We're trying to help people make important, meaningful connections. We want them to build the network that they need for their lives and career and work. So hang on. If, if we're helping you, tell other people how we're helping you so we can help them too, if that makes any sense. You can meet us at techafter5.com. I'm Phil Yanov. You can find me at philyanov.com, P-H-I-L-Y-A-N-O-V. And uh, just click on that and uh, come to any of our digital or virtual events at the moment, but we'll be back live as soon as we can because we miss you and we would like to shake your hands and maybe even give you a big old hug if you're okay with that. <laughs> All right. All right. See you soon. Thank you, friends. Bye. Bye. Bye.